What's up guys, PKRTV and after a really long time, I'm back with another logo tutorial. Now, in today's video, I'm going to be doing a updated, more in-depth tutorial on how to create face textures because I'm not sure if anyone has seen on Twitter, another core creator by the name of Defract made a top five tip tutorial on making face textures. And in his video description, he linked this which is a, a template basically what you have is you have guidelines for your eyebrows eyes nostrils and mouth and about seven potential skin tones that you can work with so in today's video I'm going to be showing you guys how you can work with that um, this is my way of doing it obviously it's not his way of doing it but I'm using his template as a base so the first thing you want to do is to go on Google, for example, type in male face, you can have large, full color face, that's just the easiest way of doing it. And you can scroll down until you find a face that you want, one that's perfectly looking forward, fairly even lighting because it saves you a bit of hassle. For example, this face I've got here, which I have used on a core of mine so I know it works. And what I've done is I've made a 820 by 820 canvas to get rid of that text because I don't need it no more and then the next thing I need is I need to copy guide over so I can line up our face image to that and I also need to pick a skin tone I think will somewhat resemble skin tone of the face we got off of Google which I think I'm gonna go with option 2 because it's not quite pink and even <clears throat> even if it doesn't work we can still change it we can still use our effects to get it to the color that we want so if I just tick the image I now have it <coughs> excuse me I'm a little ill today but anyway we've got our face texture first thing to do is resize it so that as best you can the guidelines match up with our eyes and eyebrows of the face texture that we've brought in. Which, to be fair, it's close enough. The eyes are there, the nostrils. The eyebrows are a little off, but in terms of morphing, it doesn't make any major difference. It's more just to make sure you get everything on the canvas and in the texture so it doesn't get cut off when you come to morph it. So we won't need the guide anymore, so we can just untick that. So what we've got is we've got this face, all this background stuff like a t-shirt and the blue the ears the parts we don't want technically we don't even need the ears here but it's part of the texture I'm not going to waste time getting rid of it but the first thing we can do is as you can see on the template there is already a mouth and nose eyes and eyebrows based off the way we're going to be blending the other image to this which we're going to be using the eraser we run the risk of getting potentially two sets of eyebrows, two sets of eyes and two noses. So the way I usually do or fix this is on the Finley Faux there's a tool called the Impainting Brush and I'm just going to make sure that is rasterized and what I can do is I can draw a line and the Impainting tool in theory removes backgrounds, I know it's created another set of mouth and nose and it's a case of you just keep doing it until it fixes itself and sometimes it requires a smaller brush and it's not perfect but it will eventually do it and knowing my luck today it doesn't want to do it so another way of doing this would be the patch tool what we could do is draw a section <clears throat> and work it like that <clears throat> and then just to be safe we can then go to the mirror tool make sure it's 270 by 90 which makes it a perfectly vertical mirror apply it <clears throat> And we've essentially removed all that area. A little bit here we can clean up at a later date. 
The mouth I'll keep just because the mouth of our face texture is it's large enough and we're not going to be removing the filtering area anyway. So we can just keep it there. <clears throat> so what we can do is the easiest way to get rid of all this background by having to take the eraser and get rid of every single part is this tool here, the No tool. If you hold click on it, it shows you the pen. If you go to the pen, using the snap line, draw a basic outline on one half of his face and then hold click, go to the No tool and just bend the lines a little bit so you get a basic facial shape. Make sure it's filled in. Command J to duplicate and then we can flip it, move it so it lines up, <clears throat> hold down both things and then you have these options up here we can add them to create one large shape to which we can then make it colorless again take our image drag it so we get this little green line it doesn't quite go all the way and what I do that will mask it inside of the shape so we're almost there we've now got this inside the shape and it's almost inside of the texture what we can do here is I always duplicate it in case something goes wrong and I'll just put it under we can rasterize this one and then we can start erasing things so there's two steps to this erasing that I do I start with an opacity of 100 a hardness of 0 because the it's hard to show but the center of the circle that you draw with will be solid in terms of opacity so everything within that area will get erased but the further out of the circle you go it gets lower and lower opacity which makes blending a lot easier so what we can do is we can slowly work our way around the shape as you can see here slowly bending in but I'm only going to blend one side of his face because to be perfectly honest we don't need to do both sides because we can just use the mirror tool so there we go we've done half the face we can mirror it to get the other half blended but the thing about the mirror tool is if one side you've erased more than the other side you offset the the center line so if I was to potentially mirror this I could end up with a double nose bridge which would just look weird so the easiest way to do this <clears throat> is to draw a square a clear square the size of the canvas move into it and then mirror the rectangle 270 by 90 and there we go we've got it now both sides blended into the texture and I've just noticed that our texture doesn't quite match the skin tone of the face so the way to fix that if we click on our back template go to adjustments and HSL we can then play around with the hue shift until it's slightly what we want slightly increase or decrease the saturation and luminosity just so it's a little more how we want it doesn't have to be perfect but as long as we get the general gist of things it's okay I'm just going to drag it so I get this little square which means it masks it to only that layer I don't want it affecting anything else so what I'm going to do is the next part of the erasing which is if I take the eraser again but this time keep it at zero with the hardness but if I drop the opacity to 50 what that will do is for example this forehead I don't want to get rid of the forehead but I want to blend it so it doesn't look so dark so I can use this eraser at a low opacity and just 
blend in a bit more there. And I can also do the same with the cheek and just under the chin because there's this really weird patch here that I want to get rid of. It's all about just finding areas that don't quite look right. Just going to do that a little bit. Finding areas you don't quite like the look of and erasing them so that they eventually do. And then once we've done on our half, we can then draw another rectangle, put our layer back into that rectangle, and mirror it, and there we go, we've got it inside of the texture again. And it's looking really good at the moment, we've got it blended in fairly well. So what we can do now, is as another part of the tutorial I'm going to show you guys how to create a custom facial hair or beard for your championship. Not as championship, sorry, texture. I'm so used to making championships it kind of um, blends off the tongue. But either way, what you want to do is the pen tool again and on half of the face draw a shape similar to this shape of what a beard would look like. What I've done is I've placed the nose where I think it will be, and then I'm going to move the shapes where I think they're gonna go. And this is not quite working, so I'm gonna just, for now, do like a, not really a sideburn, but kind of a under part of a beard, so not including a moustache. We can always add one at a later date. So after I've done that, I can duplicate that half, flip it, make both sides black so I can see them, and snap it there. And then I can hold down shift, click on both, and just resize it just a little bit so it covers more of the face and then click that to add them together and makes one large shape. Now the thing about beards is unless you have a really good barber you're not going to get a edge as clean as this. So what I usually do is if I go to outer glow, set that to normal and then give it about 10 or 20 and in fact this white doesn't make a difference because this isn't what's making the beard this is just the shape. So if I go to my paint brushes and then brushes, what I'm looking for is just a, stro a spray paint. And if I want to be even more specific, I can play around with these settings, but hopefully I shouldn't need to. And what I want to do is I'm just going to take the, t the curve off, but I want to just cover the face a little bit just to cover a bit area of black around where the face is going to go or the face hair if I take this curve and drag it not so it goes inside it but it masks it it then does that it now shapes it to the curve that we just created and what we can do is because no hair is that jet black we can then lower the opacity I'll say to about 50 admittedly that isn't the best spray paint brush I could have used because none of the little parts to it are perfectly even so we're gonna see if I can do it again but slightly better I'm gonna get another paintbrush see what the brush I've got and we're gonna try to use there was a certain one I, I used the other day and I can't remember where I found it. I honestly can't remember where I found it. But this one just seems very nice. So we'll try this one. Yeah. 
Why is that huge? I don't know. I'm just going to delete that layer. Start again with a smaller brush. Realising that it didn't even make a layer. There we go. Yeah, that's working much better now. So if we just do a thick layer around there, and if we take the curve off this one, because we don't need that no more, and then mask this, drop it to 50, well, not even 50, I'll just call it actually about 80. But there we go. If you use the correct brush, uh, my bad, I, I could I couldn't remember where my brush was, but you've now created stubble. And this is the easiest way of creating facial hair on a texture because this stubble, although most of it won't actually end up on your core's face because of the way facial morphing works, most likely you'll get like a cut around here and completely miss this sideburn, but you'll get part of his chin. But it creates a nice way for using an in-game facial hair because you can, you can blend the hair in, it'll look a bit better. So what I'm going to try to do now is finish off the beard by doing the moustache part. So I'm going to take this curve out, just going to untick the facial hairy part. Take the pen, now using this I'm going to draw like that. Then using the node I'm going to curve it around the beard, move that down a little bit, the shape looks weird but once it's put in it will look a bit more uniform which is what we're trying to go for, so if I move this, there we go, add them together, I've got my two halves, if I add this to the curve as well, I then create one large shape, if I tick this again, there we go. Although it's not uh, perfect there, I don't think any beard has that much of a gap around the lip. But that is the way to create facial hair or stubble for a face texture. So we've almost finished it, there's just one step left to the texture and that is the high pass tool. So if we take all this, command G to group it, and then if we rasterize the whole thing and duplicate that on the top texture if we go to filters sharpen high pass it will then cause this gray slider it's just so you can see what you're doing and if i increase this radius less or more of the face appears in the high pass filter we kind of want to do is you kind of want to get it not so it's as clear as day, but it's slightly there. It's like certain features look more prominent than others. So I usually go, that's cool, so go 20. And then you have the option of making it monochrome or not. It doesn't really matter. If you're doing a face, I wouldn't make it monochrome because, I don't know, it just wouldn't look right to me. So we apply that, and then you have a greyish looking texture and a normal looking texture. If you set the top one to overlay, it then removes the gray pretty much and overlays those changes that you made on top of the face texture. And then just to show the difference, if I untick it and tick it, if you look, certain areas have a slightly higher contrast, they stand out a little more with this high pass on. And this works to a really good effect in game. It makes certain areas stand out a lot better. But anyway, this has been BQR TV. This is how to create a face texture using Diffrax template and Affinity Photo. Please like and subscribe for more content on this channel. Hopefully I'll be making a lot more in the coming weeks. And I will catch you guys on the next one. Peace.